Hello and welcome back to my short story prep for the uh, the Ill Winter slash Illfell project uh, conceived of by Fruity Spruce and developed by Fruity Spruce and Keish quite a bit. Uh, we're going to be talking about the short story contribution. I see that my chat isn't working. I see it on the stream itself. That is so tiny though. Is it because this is in the way? How do I get rid of this? Dismiss. There we go. I had a notification. I'm getting a little sick of waiting now too. Blame the calendar. Yeah, I saw your message come in there, Fruity, but it was on it was on like the preview screens and it's so tiny for me to read there. I had a big notification in the way of the actual chat. Blame the calendar. It's only three days now though. 28th, 29th, 30th, 31st, and then we can begin. Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited. In fact, before I tap over here, I will uh, conceal some headers because uh, spoilers if you don't want them. I'm not going to talk like the, the total story today. Maybe show uh, Jensen informs Winters of the incident. No, we'll, we'll leave that closed as well. Okay, cool. Uh, TomFu69. Howdy, Tom and Fruity. Just dropping by to say howdy. How's it going, TomFu? <laughs> Good to see you. We're gonna. I'm gonna tab over to my uh, development screen. We're just waiting to begin. Waiting to begin. Okay, so that's gonna be this one. Here, I am like all in on uh, using Emacs for this now. Doom Emacs. Um, but I mean, it's complicated. But uh, I. I know what I'm doing. I have to press I to insert text, and then I would make some spaces here, and I would say uh, the story begins. Uh, that's probably too tiny, so I can go for like big text mode, big font mode there, and close the the side screen. So yeah, I got all into using Emacs, and in my previous stream, I said I was not going to be using org mode, which is something that um, uh, that Emacs has that are the other environments don't have is this org mode thing, which are .org documents. I said I wasn't going to bother learning it. Well, I wasted a lot of time learning it. Um, so that's what this is. This is an org mode document. And you can see, this is the story document. This is Welcome to Ilfell, Draft 1, uh, author Tom Bruce and a bunch of settings for export there. Because this will ultimately export to PDF, I believe. In fact, if I bring the sidebar back up and do a quick little export to PDF. I'm sorry, why are you uh, giving me options? You don't normally do that. Then a PDF does in fact get... Oh, that's hideous. Okay, I clearly have to mess with some stuff here because that's, that's wrong. Warning, PDF file produced with warnings. Okay. That's not what we want. Uh... It was working like a week ago, and now it's not. But what org mode is going to let me do is have these like subheadings as to-dos. These are the scenes in the story. Driving into Ilwinter, first of all, James and Isaac talk about Isaac's park and the partnership Isaac has taken to afford it. Uh, one thing I want to talk about today is that's not the start of the story, I don't think. I think that sounds kind of dull as the beginning of the story, and the story needs a hook. It needs... Um, something to begin with, something that we, we're we already in the the tension of it all. So I think we need a scene before this. Uh, I will delete what I've put here. The story begins. But when I'm filling out the details, you know, I will write the story begins. And once I've finished uh, a scene, I can just go up here and change that to draft or change it to, to done. And uh, these headlines have got this no head thing, so they won't be exported. What will be exported is um, 1971 and then the text of the story without these headlines below. That took some complicated setup. We don't need to get into that. It requires some code and we'll see some code. I've had to learn a new programming language to achieve some of this. Um, yeah, once once that scene was written it would be it could be marked as uh, draft or done or deleted if I wanted to get rid of that scene completely. But before we, before we go there, I do want to add a hook. I'm not going to do too much talking about story today. But I have this idea for a hook at the beginning of the story, which is uh, like the gas station. The characters 
I think should stop off at a gas station because that gives the opportunity for James or Isaac to have an interaction with a local to immediately create that sense of unease, uh, which they don't get if they're just like driving in the car together. I think this has to come after this. I think this is the hook. Um, an uncomfortable, an uncomfortable conversation with a local. And this is like that whole, I want to say Scooby-Doo. Do they ever do this in Scooby-Doo? This is like the, the local who reveals uh, something strange going on in the town, that old trope, that sort of thing. An uncomfortable conversation uh, with a local, or just an uncomfortable event there. And also I need to add no head here so that doesn't get exported when I eventually do produce the PDF without mistakes. Uh, so that's the, I also think I need a new ending after Act 3. No wait, sorry, after 1972 I need a new ending. So let me just uh, bump that open. Uh, bump this down a couple. One more, and we'll get uh, to do... I think I need a 1973, which is not necessarily a separate story in and of its own, like the other three are. I think 1973 is just like a... it's like a coda on the end. I can also add percent there to automatically things this one's not a three act structure so this one will just have uh like a like a scene heading here um and the idea is that it's uh it's a final scene with isaac isaac winters um uh isaac uh makes a compromise i'm gonna write for now because no spoilers but isaac makes a compromise is the idea and uh, yeah, the beautiful thing about org mode, which I'll explain a little bit more in a second, is when I have this subheading like this, and I mark it as draft, or then done, this little percentage automatically updates. So I, I get this, this beautiful, um, easily managed, uh, whatever you call it, going on. Easily managed like, like progress meter for the story. And the document can be a lot more complicated than this. Like, org mode was made as like something for agendas, something for like to-do lists and agendas, like your like your your calendar. Um, so it's a ridiculously powerful document format. Yeah, doing a bit of story idea building. Uh, the the story is like done. It's fleshed out. It's ready to be written. But I did have a couple of ideas that like, well, first of all. Uh, it needs a hook at the start because the first scene is kind of boring. It, it's important, but it's not its not the hook I wanted at the start of the story. And also it needed something at the end here to round out the story in uh, 1973. It doesn't need to be in 1973. It probably happens in 1973 anyway. It's just the, like this is the motif for the sections of the story that they are. Um... Each part is set in a different year, which really writes you into a corner when you're like, oh, I've come up with this other idea, um, but that would fit in this year as well, and now I've already used that title. Uh, however, that hasn't happened. It hasn't really happened yet. I haven't had that problem yet. I've got uh, 1971, 1957, 1972, and 1973, and I have ideas for 1985, uh, revisiting a couple of characters in the future. Right, yeah, in your 20s, because I haven't written in about a decade either. I'm 35 now. My last writing would have been when I was around 23, 24. I did, uh, I did in, uh, in, in university or college, I did um, film and TV production with a focus on screenwriting. So I have several screenplays written, most of which have not ever been produced. A couple of them were, a couple of short films, but I pivoted into programming because I had this idea, I had this idea that, well no, I, I got the impression, the very, uh, the very true impression that like breaking into writing is really difficult. Um, so I came up with an idea to develop a piece of software to like help promote my own writing and then I accidentally became a programmer instead for the past 10 years. So. That's how I genuinely how I became a programmer is I had 
an initial idea for something related to writing and then that just became my career instead was like doing code uh, so I haven't written in ages and part of the reason I haven't is because I've always said to myself you know well I haven't finished making that piece of software yet might have borne fruit by now yeah uh, I just need to not wait for me to finish building that piece of software and just start on something which is like what it, what this is encouraging me to do this is a complete story it just needs to be written now I'm gonna start writing on November 1st uh, and there's another story I'm also gonna be working on in the background as well called humanity uh, which uh, I won't say much more about here but you know it's there it's over in another place waiting for me to okay so let's go over to characters. I've made so many changes since my last stream. Like I said, I wasn't going to use org mode. I was going to use YAML uh, to uh, produce these uh, character documents, which is what I was doing in one of the previous streams. I came up with Sarah Bowen, the protagonist, um, and started writing details for, for Sarah Bowen here. What I've done since, though, is... Hang on, if I bring that back up. I've, re I've rewritten a lot of the characters in this document here, which is characters.org. It's an org mode document. And this is so ridiculously powerful. Uh, Tom Fu says, had the overarching plot and book titles based on it, a bunch of primary event locations and multiple subplots with some characters and then stuff got in the way. That happens, doesn't it? Twitch crashed. Okay. Uh, I'm hoping getting all the friends to write too was the cheat code to getting some dang writing done all along. I was going to start on Humanity anyway. I don't know if I actually was going to start on it, but like part of doing that initial stream was to um, make it a matter of public record that I've said I'm going to write something so that I actually do. Uh, that's, now I'm just antsy and I'm just waiting to start. I If it weren't for this, uh, this non-condition, really, that we start in November. Error 3000, decoding video error. Dang. So Tom Fu, I don't think, can hear what I'm saying right now. But yeah, like, the reason for doing these streams was to make it a matter of public record that I'm doing this. And then it's like, now I, now I have a commitment. Now I'm uh, doing, uh, doing the thing. So this is my character's document. It's an org mode document, and it is ludicrous what's going on in here. Um, I got really sidetracked, really distracted. So there's like there's characters in here with not much detail. Like John Miller just has four characteristics. That's it. Uh, Matthew Tomlinson um, is broken at the moment. No, no. Okay, I do need to go to functions. This is some code that I need to reactivate, and I need to go down to here to fix this. No, that, that results in an error. Oh, right, yeah, because I changed the name. I changed the name from Neuro to Neurological, that's right. Okay, Neurological. Now that should work. Yeah, okay. Uh, not that I want this table anyway. This table is not that useful to me. But I wanted to uh, fill in a couple of characters for what I've actually been completely sidetracked by. Hey, it's the Elite Doom Hacksaw. Yeah, you're familiar with, um... Oh, no, wait, wait. Yeah, uh, Doom Emacs, and I'm... I got fully into org mode. I was just describing. So I've got my characters here, and they all have, like, property drawers that describe a lot of their properties. There's an overview at the top of, uh, some of the characters. Like, if I hit that again, it won't get any more filled in. But we've got Sarah Bowen, uh, who is one of the lovers from the, the third story. Nikki Walker, who is the other character from the third story. James Johnson and Isaac Winters, who are the actor and producer. Uh, Scott Lucas and Lane Martins, who are the detectives from the second story. And David Lucas, who is a tertiary character related to Scott Lucas. Um, I've been trying to, like, squeeze these characters into, like, story archetypes. And I just, I hate doing it. So I think I'm actually going to delete this section, this archetype section. Um, possibly also this impact section, because it feels like you try to narrow the character down too much, and then you sort of get, you sort of pigeonhole the character, and you don't want to do that. I am keeping the arc section, but one thing I did have the idea of doing 
is rather than describing their arc as ascending, ascending, descending, steadfast, or whatever. I actually have some options up here for that, don't I? Where's um, arc? Ascending, descending, steadfast, and fatal. I've decided the four types of character arc. Uh, what I think I'd rather do is have like a start property and an end property, describing where the character is at the start of the story and where they are at the end of the story. Because then that fully describes their arc anyway. It's not then, it's not like just broadly painting a brush over them and saying, oh, they have this ascending arc. It's, you know, it's more specific and I don't have to figure out what fucking archetype they fit and then like pigeonhole them even further like that. Oh, God damn. It's working for me too. Oh, it seems to be working by my end. Okay. Twitch really doesn't like your stream in my location, apparently. Sorry, Tom Fu. You don't want main characters to do that. Um, to do what? I oh, to have like, uh, like really narrow archetypes. Yeah, I think I'm gonna delete the archetype section or make it more detailed. Like, um, Sarah Bowen isn't just the lover archetype. Like, Sarah Bowen is like a lover, a dreamer, uh, but she's also like shy and reserved. Yeah, I get pigeonholed exactly. Uh, so she's more like the um, um, more like a like a shy dreamer archetype kind of thing. But I think I'm deleting that section. I'm just gonna have a couple of different ways of like start, end of story, have that instead. Uh, and this here is the code that produces this table. So why don't I add that right now? In fact, it would go before arc. I would have uh, how the character starts. And that would be described as their start. And then I would have, even though these properties don't exist yet, I would also have how their story ends. Uh, and that I think would be better. I will add those, but they're not filled in yet. Uh, but for example, I could fill that in for Sarah, couldn't I? Like Sarah, org set property, start. Sarah starts off as um, she starts off unconfident and uh, let's just go for shy and unrequited love and that's like the start of her story uh, and then we could also add an end I don't want to there we go and the end of her story would be she's more confident by the end of the story. She's more confident and uh, I'll just write love requited for like that. And then when I go back up here and hit uh, control C a couple of times, those get filled in in the table, which is now ugly because it's too wide. But upon export, it will actually be uh, fine, I'm sure. Characters.pdf. Yeah, characters of PDF looks fine to me. Where was that section? Oh, yeah, again, the table's too wide, it doesn't fit. That's fine, whatever. Um, doesn't matter. If I weren't in big mode, I, I think this would work. Or if I did that. Um, big mode, big font mode. Yeah, if I weren't in big mode, you can see it perfectly. So that's fine. I don't need this to be a document anyway. Uh, Let's actually go back over to big mode, though, because I think it makes it more readable. So I want that overview at the top to basically tell me where each character, each major character at least, is supposed to start and end, and uh, therefore what their arc is. Ascending, ascending, descending, steadfast, fatal, whatever. But what really got me sidetracked was doing all this demographic stuff down here. I've got age demographics for my characters. Um, like, they are mostly Silent Generation or Baby Boomer, because it's set in the 70s. There are four... Actually, no, hang on, are there more? Yeah, because I haven't yet filled in some details for some of the characters. Yeah, so I've got four Silent Generation characters and three Baby Boomer characters. I probably have... Who isn't filled in yet? Matthew Tomlinson, and John Miller. Uh, Matthew Tomlinson is going to be another baby boomer, and John Miller is probably Silent Generation as well. So those we'll get. 
filled in. But I'm not, I'm not calculating. I'm not just giving them a generation. I'm actually giving them like a date of birth and then calculating from this date of birth here uh, using some code what their generation is. Uh, there's a big comment here that I can just hide because I have this list of uh, age demographics as well. Wow, that's a ridiculous amount of uh, code there. I got so sidetracked, like, learning all of this. So we have three adolescents in the story so far and four adults. Actually, you know what? I think um, one of the characters I haven't filled in yet will be, uh, will be elderly. They'll probably be in their 60s at least. So that will be a, another thing there. And how this all works is ridiculous. It's all um, back up in this functions no export section. With some constants, like these are the start dates for Lost, Greatest, Silent, Boomer, Gen X, Millennial, Gen Z, Alpha, Gen uh, Beta. Those are the start dates for all of those. I also have these start dates, which I would prefer not to be hard coding like this, but um, this was just a matter of convenience at the time to calculate like what age demographic they fit into. Again, this doesn't need to be done, but like this is the code that does it. I've had to learn uh, Emacs Lisp. It's a hideous language. I don't like it, but I learned enough of it to get this done. I also didn't want to like work out individually what each character's star sign was, so I've got this. Not that I'm going to use star signs, I just think it's something that's valuable to know, because like, if a character, if there were a character interested in star signs, like, they'd know theirs. I don't remember a lot from the actual writing class, but I'm heavily well-read. LOL. One or two dimensional characters. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to make my characters as three dimensional as possible. And in fact, it, it, it pains me that like, in my demographic section down here, uh, say in health disability and neurodivergence, right? Uh, do I need to do these again? Hang on. Right, so there is a character in the story with arthritis. Uh, there might be a character with asthma. I'm not sure. But this is just like a, a potential way to give that character a little uh, more fleshing out. She might be asthmatic. She might not. I'm not sure if it contributes anything to... Well, it kind of... In a way, it does. Because she... The character I think might be asthmatic is who was originally conceived of as um, quote-unquote confident girl. Uh, so she was just called Confident Girl. She's now called Nikki Walker. And I kind of think, well, maybe one of the reasons that she is confident is because she's um, she's compensating for, for, for conditions like her asthma. And that would be something to like give a little bit more to her character. Uh, this is 1971 to 1973. So it's the early 70s. I did do some research into whether asthma inhalers existed in the 70s. They were actually... The um, uh, the modern type of inhaler was invented in 19... I think I read 1956, or it might have been 1960-something. Because um, if, if the character did have asthma, I wanted to know, like, what would she be using to... Uh, to treat that uh, it may not come up it may not even come up in the story but what definitely comes up in the story is like gender and sexuality of the characters uh, because we've got um, Isaac Winters and James Jansen a gay couple at the beginning of the story uh, so me doing demographics but what annoyed me as i was saying about um me doing all this demographic bullshit particularly when it came to like health disability neurodivergence is i can't list multiple conditions in org mode in the property section so i can't like say this character has arthritis and also is an amputee um so it's a bit tricky i mean i could i could do something more complicated here like instead of instead of searching the character props for uh does this character have arthritis i could 
search the character props more like backslash backslash or uh, and then wrote in amputee as well that would still that should still say one here if i've got this right and it does okay so i have got it right that would tell me whether the car the character had arthritis or was an amputee uh, but what i would want would be like to get like these tables to be more two-dimensional like are they do they have a physical condition that like uh is some kind of impairment and also are they you know um christian are they are they gay are they um what age are they have that sort of thing going on which i can do it's just very complicated especially in a language that i've only just started learning and i got so sidetracked doing this this has just been uh, me for the past week doing like detailed demographics which for my humanity story I think is going to be very important I don't think it's so important for this one uh, I was taught to heavily research actual time periods before I ever thought of writing in them it's the same for acting slash role playing correct yeah it's good that is good advice uh, you want to remember a lot of these weren't even properly diagnosed at that time that is correct yeah uh, autism autism has very rarely been diagnosed but I didn't list the character who's autistic. Which one? Matthew Tomlinson, I think? I didn't list Matthew Tomlinson as autistic because he's diagnosed autistic. I listed Matthew Tomlinson as autistic because he is autistic. At least in so far as I've conceived of him. Uh, particularly when it comes to 1985, which is not even part of the story because I'm setting this one in the 70s. But I, I want to ensure that I write Matthew in a certain way, even though I, yeah, even though like characters written to be autistic deliberately are so bad. Too much in Hollywood doesn't even do any research, which is why it's mostly crap now. Yeah. So my aim with Matthew is not to like go the route of writing him as like deliberately profoundly autistic, like so many deliberately autistic characters are in media it's to 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 write him with a sense of um matthew's the photographer and the reason he is a photographer is sort of i have it in mind that he he wasn't a very social kid but as soon as he got behind a camera he became much more social but despite that he's still got you know he's still autistic so he's still got other autistic traits the um the hyperfixations, the uh, like an aversion to small talk, but like a like a a like for big talk instead. Uh, but yeah, having having just having an idea of him as a as a well developed character, I think in 1985, this is why this is why I know Matthew's autistic, or why I think Matthew's autistic, is because in 1985 his son is eventually diagnosed autistic for for that story that i have planned for the future that i'm not even writing yet it's just a it's a potential sequel rewriting the same movies over and over isn't imagination hollywood it is not which yeah that goes back to talking about like this overview section because all of these archetypes here like lover explorer outlaw creator everyman caregiver the innocent the orphan the child uh the jester all of these come from like uh, Joseph Campbell's Hero with a Thousand Faces, I think. Like they are, well, they, they might come from, they might not be Campbell, they might be from Jung, they might be from Carl Jung, is it? Uh, but they're, they're story archetypes that come from, from like a, like a uh, psychosocial criticism of, of the myths and literary works that exist or existed at the time uh, and the problem is like other writers then start using the, these archetypes as like as though they were the, uh, the the bible by which to develop your characters and stuff uh, which is why I'm probably going to delete that section because I, t I disagree uh, I disagree. I, I don't. I don't think every character. I don't think every story needs to have the hero character 
the outlaw character, the explorer character, the the, the magician, all those uh, archetypes. Someone after the fact might go to your work and say, "Oh, this is the this is the magician archetype." But you'd be like, "Yeah, well, they weren't developed that way." Like I, I think Matthew Tomlinson, the our autistic character, uh, neurology autistic, um, our photographer, he might fit the magician archetype because uh, he's. Is is quite a um, uh, quite a little bit shy, not super shy, but a little bit reserved, um, but very very technically skilled in what he does, that being photography, uh, and having like considerable knowledge about like his specialty, photography. So he kind of does fit the role of the magician in those archetypes, but you don't need to develop your characters like that you just wind up uh as you say tomfu like having these 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 flat and uh done and done and done again stories you think you're writing short stories based on the characters in games like cdda i mean even tossing out the super crazy stuff those stories get pretty amazing lol uh maybe actually I have some zombie stories that I wrote ages ago. If I go over to... If I go over to hang on this screen for a second so I can uh, mess about on my other screen. And open up... Open up what? Open up... No, am I in the wrong browser? No, I'm not. Okay. Uh, we will go to here. There's my shitty underdeveloped website um screenplays i actually have right side of the living dead which was a series of four short zombie stories i wrote like in 2012 wow okay uh, 2012 and i think these are the last things that i wrote uh at least the last things i wrote that have been published anywhere by which i mean just my own website here um so that is that is longer than 10 years ago. That is, that is probably 13 years ago, roughly. Assuming this is, uh, assuming this is correct, which it isn't, it isn't really. Um, but these were a few pages long and they were short zombie stories. This is long before I knew anything about CDDA. The thing about CDDA is it is, um, the game and like all of the things in it, like the the art and the sound and stuff, it's all licensed for reuse by anyone. Rykon could turn some of his stuff into TV series. They got so detailed. Yeah, Rykon. Rykon has Rykon is a great storyteller. Uh, especially to like. Rykon has to improvise so much of that as well, right? I'm sure there's a lot of structure goes into it, but he does a lot of improvisation uh, to go along with it. I haven't watched much of Rykon stuff, but I did watch, I can't remember the name of the character, but the character that he ended up playing for um, his, what's the series? The, uh... oh, Wood, inner wood, inner wood for his inner wood series. That character had. I know the character came from a uh, from a previous series. I think, yeah, I think she was a helicopter pilot, which is an amazing detail to know about somebody in a setting where helicopters don't exist, as they don't in the inner wood setting. But uh, that's because she came from a from a different background. He just he had so much fleshing out of his characters. Um, but it, it does uh, does Rykon write? Because if Rykon wrote, I think Rykon would write something excellent. I should look that up. Um, so some of these characters are barely fleshed out that much. David Lucas barely fleshed out. Matthew Tomlinson barely fleshed out. Uh, Nikki, how much detail have you got, Nikki? That table needs fixing. 
Yeah. Do we have your... We don't actually have your... We do have it for Sarah, because Sarah is the most fleshed out by far. Uh, your details. You've got your star sign. You're a Leo. Yeah. And that, that there is just based on... Uh, Where's it based on? There's your DOB. Yeah, it's based on the function, the star sign function that I wrote back up in the uh, the previous section. Not overview, but in uh, in the function section. Like I was mentioning earlier, I have this... Uh, for lack of wanting to calculate it for each individual character, just a function that calculates their rough star sign, it'll be off by a day for leap years. Uh, for anything past, like, Aquarius. Because I... I it's such a rare case, we don't necessarily need to bother with leap years. But it will be off by a day. You wrote a role- oh, cool! Rikon wrote a role-playing game. Uh, ran into a CD Day runway early on when I had no idea what the heck he was playing. Ah, it reminded me of the original Wasteland game though. Yes, Wasteland. I've heard of Wasteland. I've heard of Wasteland, but I can't place it in my head. Oh, oh, hang on. Wasteland is the game that the original developer of Cataclysm based uh, Cataclysm on, I think. Because it was, I think it was Wales originally started uh, working on Cataclysm, but then abandoned the project but had it so had it licensed so that the community could take over um i haven't looked too much into wasteland but I, i'm familiar with the name so that's my characters and how i got like really distracted on them but i feel like i've got and i've got them in my head really well sarah bowen the uh the, the shy kind of dreamer archetype she is about 15 years old at this time of the story. Do I have a... I do not have an age. Um, but she is. She's about 15, 16 years old at this point in the story. Uh, well, no, she'll be about 17, 18 by the time of the main bulk of the story featuring her and Nikki. Uh, Sarah is in love with Nikki. Uh, Nikki, completely oblivious. And that's kind of Nikki's nature. Nikki is uh, oblivious. Nikki is the kind of explorer archetype. Nikki... Uh, wants nothing more than an adventure and just to have fun and um, prove that she can do it all. James is like a... Uh, I had him pegged as the outlaw archetype, I think, in Overview. Yeah, James Johnson, the outlaw archetype. He's kind of... In my head, he's like this, this cool, kind of Han Solo-esque like character. He's an actor. Um, but he's more... You know, he's... He's reserved, he's unchanging. In fact, I'm pretty sure his arc is a flat arc. He doesn't have a real arc in the story. The main bulk of his story happens through Isaac Winters, who does have a descending arc. Isaac is uh, Isaac is an obsessive kind of creator. He is um, the film producer, who James has starred in most of the movies produced by. Uh, and Isaac is building this theme park, um, but it's costing him a lot of money. A lot of money he can't afford to be losing. Uh, we've got Scott Lucas, a detective. Elaine Martins, his partner, also a detective. Uh, by which I mean partner in detecting, not partner in life. Like Scott has a has a wife at home. He has a kid here, David Lucas. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with Matthew Tomlinson. We talked about how he's the photographer. Matthew Tomlinson's, um, he's not a major character in these stories. He does become a major character in the future if I come to write those future stories. But Matthew Tomlinson, I've got this idea that he's the photographer. He's more shy and reserved, except for when he's behind a camera. I have him pegged as autistic only because in 1985, he does have a kid who is diagnosed autistic. Uh, why? Ooh, ooh, the reason why is because that one actually that story in 1985 is so based on my own personal experience like as a dad uh, to an autistic kid who also probably is autistic myself uh, 
hence Matthew having he's not a self insert character by any means but like that was me finding experience I wanted to write about and going oh this is actually a good story uh John Miller who the fuck was John Miller oh John Miller John Miller was one of the um the hotel owners yeah I mainly just wrote Matthew and John onto this document because I wanted to like start describing physical attributes physical and neurological attributes in this demographic section which as I say not super useful for this story um oh there you go you've got the income levels of all the characters as well 71% middle income 28% high income uh that probably changes as I fill in more characters but I wanted to like complete this demographics document by having uh like a list of their like physical conditions like how many characters are physically disabled in some way or neurologically um neurodivergent in some way uh and the answer is at the moment not many um but when it comes to writing that other story, Humanity, I think this is going to be very useful because the whole point of that Humanity project is to uh, try, at least, to um, describe the, the, full, the, the full tapestry of humanity, the full, uh, the full nature of, of human beings and their interactions uh, in... A book around a hundred thousand words so i mean difficult but having demographics for like am i missing anything have i like overdone something or underdone something uh, i think it'll be useful for that story and i just i wasted a lot of time working out the code and stuff here but i'm happy with it i'm happy with i'm happy to have it as like as a measure of where my characters fall i think it's quite useful um they do the game on his role-playing channel. Yeah, I did. I read that a uh, little uh, bit earlier. Because Rykon's got a couple of channels. I will check that out at some point. If he's written a role-playing game, like a tabletop game, I'm guessing. I will... I think I saw one of his videos of that, you know. I'll check it out again. Uh, anyway, that is characters. We get out of big mode for a moment because it's, uh, it's too big. Too big. The story document is ready to go, I think, especially with the addition of the new uh, the hook at the start of the story, which I do think. Um, we go back into big mode. I do think the gas station, an uncomfortable conversation with a local, is a more interesting place to start than just driving into Illwinter. James and Isaac talk about Isaac's Park. Like, there will be tension in this scene between James and Isaac but it isn't the tension that the rest of the story here is based on uh, the tension that the rest of the story is based on is like they're in this alien town uh, this town that's so unfamiliar to them they are you know they're an actor and a film producer going into this small town the idea is that as a couple of metropolitan types uh, the place and the people there are a little alien to them and a little uncomfortable and that's kind of where the uh the uncomfortable horror vibes are supposed to come from. Hence, having that as a hook at the start, a lot better than starting like this, I think. And the ending, 1973, I just think this is something that might be needed to tie the three stories back together at the end. Because the funny thing about the three stories is, like, it's really the whole thing like from 1971 to 1973, all four stories are about Isaac Winters and his development of this park. But none of the stories are from his POV. And in fact, he's barely in 1957 or 1972. So I think having this at the end uh, makes it clear thematically what was going on and why the three stories do link into his. And uh, it, it ultimately just ties a little bow on the end, I think. But we'll see. I mean... As I say, these can be tabbed across to draft, tabbed across to done, or just deleted from the story like that. Um, 
have to make sure that deleted ones don't get exported when I come to exporting, but I clearly have some export settings to mess with and figure out. Because it wasn't working when I did it earlier. The character document uh, did. That worked perfectly. Like, this is the character document. This is what it's supposed to look like when it gets exported. Over long tables, but that I can fix. And you're supposed to have, yeah, the details of the characters listed out like this. All of this being based on the code of the character that I've written. Um, I clearly have a lot more to fill out. And you get down to the demographics and that's all listed there as well. That's what it's supposed to look like, but evidently it did not. I have to fix that. Uh, am I in the buffer? Yeah, buffer kill. There we go. Protagonist by proxy. Interesting. Oh, yeah, Isaac. Isaac is protagonist. He's... Um... In 1971, he's kind of the deuteragonist. He's. I have it in mind that James Junction is the POV character, and Isaac is his partner in the story. Uh, but then you're sort of right, yeah, he's protagonist by proxy, in that the rest of the story is kind of about him and his park. Uh, and ultimately, this is where he's the... He's revisited at the end there, and we see from his perspective what I guess all of that meant, in a way. I think that that works, and it... I think it makes clear what probably wasn't clear from, uh, from, from this point. Like, ending the story here, I don't think it was clear that I had this intention, especially because actually 1972 got restructured a bit. It originally wasn't, oops, okay. I clearly don't know what I'm doing here. It is now, okay. 1972 is from Sarah's perspective, one of the teenagers visiting the theme park. Cause I thought, okay, first visit to the theme park, like the best POV character for that is like the kids, the teenagers visiting it. Um, that wasn't always the case. Originally it was gonna, start with James Jensen driving back into town a year later uh, but then I realised no, no no, it kind of doesn't stand as its own story then as like three short, really focused point of view stories so I think it has to has to, has to focus in on uh, Sarah and Nikki instead so there was going to be more scenes in 1972 that made sense of what was going on from Isaac and James's perspective, but then I think that all changed, and that's why I've added 1973 as the thing that ties and ties a bow on the Isaac and James story. Although they they are featured in 1972, they're just kind of we overhear a conversation between them in the background. Yeah, uh, there are definitely a few books that have done that. I can't specifically think of any or name any right now. In a way, I think Kurt Von Gutt's The Sirens of Titan does that. But it's been so long since I've read that. I'm just pointing to it on my shelf right now. It's been so long since I've read that, but I can't remember. But I think there's a protagonist character in that who's like... They come and go out of the main story. But it's kind of clear that they are the, uh, they are the character that the book is about. I think, like I said, it's been ages since I've read that. There are other characters that don't have protagonists, which is what my other book is supposed to be doing, the humanity one. I'm supposed to be having a, a lot of um, a lot of non-verbal characters because I'm beginning very early into the journey of humanity. Potentially, potentially, I'm doing a whole prelude book that that is like before life even exists. I'm not sure about that one. But you can do books without characters as well. The protagonist in that case is kind of the universe. It's kind of uh, uh, the formation of life itself within the universe is the quote-unquote protagonist of that story. Uh, anyway, the other thing that I wanted to do, and it's something I started in my previous stream, was if I just tab back over to this screen for a second while I open up the other piece of software. Actually, let me save some stuff here. Make sure that stuff is actually... Um, saved before I tab anywhere else. Uh, 
Okay, we are good. I can quit that now and uh, open up uh, the other thing. We can go back over there. You can just see um, whatever that is. It's my uh, it's my it's my sound management for the stream. Microphone over here doing its thing. Uh, ignore that. It wants me up to, to update GIMP, I think, and it's on the wrong screen. There we go, now we can see GIMP. Go take a nap, Tom Fu. Yeah, getting old does suck. Um, I don't really do naps. I, can, I think I can sleep during the... You were born in... Seven, oh, okay, you were born in 71. Okay, you are older than me then. I was going to ask, but I, I thought it was rude to ask. Uh, you go get some sleep. Uh, have fun. Yeah, have a good sleep. Um, the thing that we were gonna, that I was gonna do, was take another look at, because I started this. I did this, and it was terrible. On the previous stream, I took another shot at like visualizing the setting. After that, and came up with this, which is not great, but I thought I'd just work from this a little bit and like uh maybe develop it a little bit more because we've got this this idea okay so uh fruity originally described it as uh, a small town ill fell on a lake with ill winter across the water uh that being the amusement park and that was the setting and then mysterious stuff goes on in the town and the park and yada 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 all that stuff uh then the 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 law document that we have uh, describes it as not being on a lake but being on a river, and I kind of went and tried to like, okay, let's let's do what with that. Let's sort of try to combine that idea and came up with this like narrow lake that is part of this river uh, network, and the town is in fact basically on the river. You can see these like light green shades here. I tried to say that well, the, the town is like spread out a little bit like that. You got the bulk of the town here, but then you've got like something in the forest here, something near the bridge here, and something off this way here. My thinking is that when Isaac and James drive into Ilfell, it was going to be through the forest, so it probably comes either from this way or from this way. I'm not sure. The thing that I wanted to do here was maybe group these together. Can I like select multiple? I have no idea. I don't know if I can. Okay, I, nope. Nope, I can't, I can't select multiple, but I can just drag and drop them in like that, which is what I wanted to do. I don't use GIMP very much. So that I could have that as a single layer and then begin a fresh layer outside of there. There we go. And essentially use that as a palette to begin a new map, a new a new version. We will have this inside of a layer group as well, I think. And then we can modify the transparency of that layer group to get a better sense of what's going on. So that's our that's our grass. That's our that's our planes. That's where in America we are on planes. America's so boring. I did a ton of research into towns in kind of the region. I did a bunch of like Googling, Google Mapsing um, towns in the, the area of like the Midwest. And oh my God, everywhere's so fucking flat. It is, it's insane. How is so much land so fucking flat? It's ridiculous. But it is. That's what it's like. You, once you get to like the the western side of the Midwest, it cut off whatever I said about seventy one. Yeah, I I just remarked that you were born in seventy one. Uh, I like your joke that uh, you were born in seventy one, but remember none of it because I say the same thing about nineteen eighty nine. I say I was born in the eighties, but I can't remember them. 
Must have been a good time. We're gonna... My plan here is to create a separate layer per feature that I want to do. And I think the first feature that I want to do is... How big is this? Oh, no, I've got it the same color at the moment. Uh, you know what? Maybe gray? That's too big. No, it's not. Not for what I'm about to try and do. Because my idea here is to, like, try to describe the... I feel like, as I was saying, once you get to the west of the Midwest region, uh, you do start to have... Um, mountains and so that's like what i'm trying to like do here is to say look that's gonna be kind of a mountainous region i just i don't think i'm very good at art i think that's the that's the major problem here you start to get features like that and there's probably it's probably a little bit of a canyon as well you know like that maybe goes that way so then you've got like, um, yeah, you've got hilly or mountainous terrain this side, hilly or mountainous terrain this side, with like a gorge coming through the middle that the, that the road and forest and river runs down into the lake. Everybody's memory before they're four is like nothing though as well. Yeah. I think I almost had a head injury when I was four, but instead I have a, a nasty scar on my chin. Didn't actually suffer a major head injury until I was 17 and passed out one time. Hit my head on a church. Fortunately, I think I came out and scraped. I don't know, because I never got the results of the... Um, I had to do a, a CT scan and I never got the results. Acting not so great a prospect, even though I want to. That's a shame, dude. Sorry to hear that. I'm thinking mountains, hills, gorge through the middle, river flowing down. Kind of makes sense. With forests dotted along those sides. And what I did for the forests in the in the the lower document here was to like use the spray can feature, airbrush. They're going to be on another layer. Um, how big is this? Too small. Too small now. I want like a, I want like a massive sized thing here. Like uh, check seventy five. See how that looks. Enjoy the commode. Enjoy your sleep, uh, Tampu. Yeah, that'll do. So we have the the foresty area on the mountainside and like coming down the, the hills there and try to just trace the original features I had. I had uh, the idea of there being forests in here as well and forests here flowing down this side of the, uh, the map and kind of basically added this bit just for character but yeah and then some more forest just here, like that, and a bit more here, like that. Um, how does that look when I increase the opacity of this layer? Terrible. That's good, that's fine. Terrible is fine for now. Because I didn't even fill in this part yet, the uh, what I thought were going to be mountainous bits. I hadn't, I hadn't like, picked out a colour for that. Deep grey? Deep green, maybe? Or do you want to go lighter for mountains? I don't know, what's like an... Cosmo Grasa, didn't I? Uh... Let's try to go darker, like... A smidge darker like that and see if I'm allowed to fill this line with that. Oh, I am, very good. So same on this side, 
and we'll say not on this side. We will fill that section, that section. Don't know why I'm not allowed to fill that bit. And then the even higher up bit will go darker still, like that. Now the problem with that is I've probably can't see that. But the, yeah. So what needs to happen here is this layer needs to have its transparency brought down. No, I can't, I can't art. I can't art. I think I'm just gonna scrap that. But essentially, the thing that I was doing previously, that map that was terrible, I did an improved version of, and this is the setting. Well, it's not the setting, but it's how I visualized the setting. Obviously, Fruity Cache came up with and developed the, the setting, and I decided I wanted to kind of get a visual for it. So I have this idea of Isaac and James stopping at a gas station on the way, and I think they come down this road, and there's a gas station like here. Eventually, I think there's a McDonald's. Um, there's a McDonald's because it becomes a popular destination, does ill winter. And the idea, part of the idea of like having these junctions in the road in my head was that people would come towards Ilfell, but then they'd like turn off before they even hit Ilfell, head off to ill winter instead. Then you've probably got hotels built on the lake around here. Uh, Cause that's part of the document, Fruity, hey. Um, that there was, there was a hotel boom, or there was a there was a boom in the town initially, but then when Ilwinter started developing their own hotels, I don't know when that happens. I've got any idea when that happens. I just have like the story where the the, the park opens in seventy two, starts development in seventy one, opens in seventy two, is fully owned by a separate corporation in seventy three. Um. Yeah, that was the idea. And then... Tried to add a little bit of character here. I really, I wish I was good at art. I really do. But I am, I'm not. One thing that I did kind of want to do. No, no, uh, not that. One thing I wanted to do. I do think like the what art is, though? Is it's just time, isn't it? Uh, what colour are we on? That is the wrong colour. We want, like, a blue. That might do. We'll do that. One idea I had was, like, make this m look more like water by having something fill in the middle of it. And the thing about that is... Uh, it would have been better if I had a separate layer for it. Like for this, this um, lake object. Because I could have just taken that and then copied it to a new layer and shrunk it down to fit inside itself. Uh, instead I've done this, which I don't know why I get that weird effect there. It's probably because of the brush I'm using. But that doesn't matter because I intend to do something with this layer anyway. Uh, I intend to blur it, I think. Gaussian blur? Can we get it stronger than that? See, look at that. That does genuinely... I think improve the the texture of the map. Let's go for like a twenty-seven point two seven, and then hide it. Yeah, genuinely, looks a little more. I think the color's wrong, but I can just modify the color with like um, uh, hue sat hue saturation. Yeah, we can go for like a deeper kind of blue, like that. Like a yeah, there you go, lightness. Modify that just slightly to that point, and then saturation. Go more grey, or... Just like softly add a little bit of texture to the, uh, the lake. How does that look with, with and without? With? Without. Eh, you know. I do think art is just 
obviously it's a skill that people train for ages and it's a talent that a lot of people just have they're very very good my dad is a talented artist he's like fantastic at doing sketches of shit i don't know why i didn't inherit that you think you think you think i'd pick something up from him but no um that is a water right there i don't know if i prefer it with or without that texture i think it doesn't help that the rest of the the image i've got doesn't have that texture But if I had worked properly on this and done it in separate layers and stuff, like yeah, most of it's that one layer, including a lot of the roads. Some of them aren't apparently, but some a lot of them were. If I, instead of having this just be like, yeah, that's the initial sketch on one layer. That's most of it, isn't it? On top of that, there's just shading of the town. The forest I decided to add, plus some of the roads. Oh, plus uh, reshaping Ill Winter a little bit. Then the uh, name tags and whatnot. Whatever, I can't do art. I think I can if I like, like, I'm not talking at the same time and I just like dedicate several hours to just stressing over an image. I think I could, I think I could do art then. I think it would frustrate me, but after six hours of looking at the same thing and working on it like incrementally, I think I could do something that actually looked pretty. Um, but I just I don't have that kind of time uh, right now. I might have that kind of time in the future for various things. But okay, I do think uh, that's me ready to go for. Friday, I think, is the 1st of November. I might start Thursday night. Um, how do I do this again? There we go. All the characters. Because they're, they're very fleshed out in my head, even if they're not fully fleshed out in this document, because I got distracted by doing all this um, demographic nonsense. Uh... We'll close all tabs. We'll close all um, things. It is Friday, yeah. It is. It is Friday. I think I'm gonna start writing this story then. See how far I get. Because yeah, genuinely, I was shocked actually to find out that my previous story was written. Uh, like the previous thing that I wrote to completion was written 12 or 13 years ago. That is genuinely shocking. But come Friday, I will be. Um, no, 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 no. That one. Thank you. Uh, and then this document here. Right here, in this document. Looking at all that. Ready to go. Ready to, uh, from this point here. 1971. Act 1. The gas station. An uncomfortable conversation with a local. Hit insert. And just uh, begin writing here. And when that is done, I just go shift to the right, and mark it as a draft, and then happy. Although I wish it would say. You know, I might change a property here, because this the way this works is it thinks that draft is a to do state. And done is a complete state. I think I want um, draft to also be a done state. So even if I do mark something as as uh, as done eventually, no, I need to do, I need to do something to like make it know what I'm talking about here. There we go. Now it says one of three and six percent there. Uh, I just think that helps, that makes it clearer how much progress I've made on the draft. Yeah. So that's what I want. So my, my, my story document is also my to-do list document for the scenes, which I love. I, Like I said, I got really distracted getting into this org mode thing, and I was originally going to write it in this document, story.md. Uh, I'm not, I'm going to write it in org. 
whatever that means. But I'm going to leave it there for now. And the next time I talk about this story, I think we'll be in a... Hi again, I'm going to do some editing kind of stream. Like reviewing the story after it's written and talking about editing it. I don't know when the next time I'm going to talk about humanity is, though. Might do one more about humanity at some point, either this week or early November. I would still like to hit 50,000 words in November, but I am no longer, I think, um, holding myself to that specifically. Like, as a hard line, I need to hit 50,000 words in November. Uh, it would be great if I did. But I... I just don't know how ready I am to write humanity. Because of how stupidly big it is, and... I need to go over more notes of, like, what that even is. Because uh, in my head, again, it's like something... I've got this, like, I've got a clear picture of... Uh, not where Prelude begins, but, like, ignore Prelude. I've got a clear picture of where the first humanity story begins. It's with um, Aurorin Tugenensis, uh, one of our ancestral ape species. Um, like, post our divergence from chimpanzees, but before Australopithecus. Start there and tell stories from the POV of a member of that species, and then go through Australopithecus with some other POV characters, uh, and then uh, into the genus Homo, where we have Homo erectus, uh, Homo habilis, um, and ultimately work our way up to Homo neanderthalensis and Homo sapiens, who coexist for a part of the story, and we bounce between POV characters uh, in both species. And the ultimate, the culmination of, of that story is the, well, it's it's the, the contest between the different species and one supplanting the other, and ultimately sort of uh, potentially sort of being invention being the uh, the reason that that happens like ingenuity um craftsmanship the the name of the book was to be humanity stone so it would be about who develops stone technology better and faster although i do need to re-clarify why neanderthals went extinct because it's it wasn't it wasn't really to do with um uh competition with homo sapiens it was more but it was more to do with integration and then just being um being left out being not as environmentally adapted to uh survive the ice age i think but that's a big old other story that i <laughs> need to talk about another time i will end this there i don't know what i accomplished this stream genuinely because I already had the idea uh, that we needed a hook at the start of the story and a kind of like a bow to tie on the end of it. Came up with that a couple of days ago. I just hadn't written into the document yet. And I, I tried to do redo the illustration, but I realized I can't do that stream. It's really embarrassing trying to do a work of like illustration on uh, on stream and be like people can see what you're doing right now you're about you're about to also publish this to, to youtube for like the rest of time we'll call it i'm just ready to start writing uh thanks for sticking around and being here for this video this stream i'll catch you in the next one Ta-ra.